This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil edged lower on Tuesday as the market waited to see if Iraqi exports through the Sehan oil terminal would resume, which could ease the supply tightness caused by the OPEC plus cut, while a faltering Chinese economy weighed on the outlook for demand. Brent crude was down 11 cents at $84.35 a barrel by 0651 GMT while the more active U.S. West Texas Intermediate October contract slipped $0.10 cents to $80.02 a barrel. The front-month WTI contract that expires in September was up $0.17 cents at $80.89 a barrel. Oil edged lower on Tuesday as the market waited to see if Iraqi exports through the Sihan oil terminal would resume, which could ease the supply tightness caused by the OPEC plus cut, while a faltering Chinese economy weighed on the outlook for demand. Brent crude was down 11 cents at $84.35 a barrel by 0651 GMT, while the more active U.S. West Texas Intermediate October contract slipped 10 cents to $80.02 a barrel. The front-month WTI contract that expires in September was up 17 cents at $80.89 a barrel. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Iraq's oil minister Hayan Abdul Ghani arrived in the Turkish capital Ankara to discuss several issues including the resumption of oil exports through the Sihan oil terminal, a source in the minister's office told Reuters on Monday. Iraqi oil minister will meet his Turkish counterpart to discuss energy issues, on top of which is the resumption of Iraq's northern oil exports via Turkey's Sihan port, said an oil official. Turkey halted Iraq's 450,000 barrels per day BPD, of exports through the northern Iraq-Turkey pipeline on March 25 after an arbitration ruling by the International Chamber of Commerce ICC. Egypt's Petroleum Ministry on Tuesday announced a new oil discovery in the Geysem and Tawila West concession in the Gulf of Suez. The new discovery was made by Egypt's Charon through exploration well GNN11, currently producing more than 2,500 barrels a day the ministry said. The well is the fourth to be completed and another three wells could be drilled as part of the current phase of exploration, the ministry said. Total output from the field, located in North Geysem, has reached about 23,000 barrels per day, the ministry added. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Shanghai Futures Exchange, SHFE. Lead prices leapt to a more than 17-month high on Tuesday on fears that there would not be enough metal to cover the short positions expiring next month. The most traded September lead contract on SHFE jumped as much as 1% to 16,280 yuan, $2,235.50, per metric ton, a level unseen since March 2022. Thousands of tons of lead sold on the SHFE for delivery next month are expected to trigger a price surges. The current SHFE inventory is not enough to cover them and the physical market is tight. Iron ore futures rose on Tuesday, with the Singapore benchmark hitting its highest level in more than three weeks, as policy measures to shore up China's sputtering economic rebound underpinned sentiment. The steel-making ingredient's most active September contract on the Singapore exchange climbed as much as 1.2% to $108.75 per metric ton, its strongest level since July 28. The most traded January iron ore on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange ended morning trade 1.5% higher at 782 yuan and 50 fen, $107.38 per ton extending its rally to a ninth session and propelling the contract to its highest since late July 2021. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. The condition of the U.S. spring wheat crop dropped in the latest week, the government said on Monday, as forecasts for hot and dry weather continued in the northern plains this week. The stress on the high-protein spring wheat crop could add to concerns about production shortfalls in key growing areas such as Canada and the European Union. Corn ratings also declined while soybean ratings held steady, according to the U.S. Agriculture Department's weekly crop progress and conditions report. 
That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.